Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to another Saturday Live. It is almost 11 a.m. and I thought I'd show up a couple minutes early just in case anybody was waiting around uh, for it to start. Today I am going to be doing a Dutch pour on a 10 by 20 canvas. Here it is. Um, and I am going to go from beginning to end the whole process so you can see what I do from start to finish. Um, before I get started though, I do have a couple of announcements um, that I will talk to you about while I'm prepping the edges of my canvas. Um, I am gonna be in a few shows this summer and I'm gonna give you the dates of that. And I also have a very exciting uh, week coming up where I'm gonna be doing a video every day. <laughs> and I want to talk to you about that. So, um, looks like we've got some people here. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this uh, July 1st. Can you believe the summers are already flying by? This has been a fantastic summer for me. I hope it's been fantastic for you as well. Um, for those of you who are just joining, we're going to be doing a Dutch pour on a 10 by 20 canvas. And I am going to be walking you through from beginning to end the whole process of how I do this, including unwrapping and prepping the canvas. So when I tip the camera forward so that you can see what's going on on the table, I will not be able to see your comments. So I will try to pause in between different sections and answer questions or um, see your comments as they come through. Does that sound good? Okay, I'm gonna tip this forward so we can get started. Hopefully you can see everything okay there. And all right, it looks, it looks good. So we've got a 10 inch by 20 inch deep edge canvas. That means that the edge of the canvas is one and a half inches deep. I like this size canvas. Sometimes I use the shorter edge canvases as well. Um, but I, follow, I find that these don't necessarily need to be framed. The edges, as the paint drips over the edges, it creates a really nice look and it's really nice to be able to see that sometimes. So I just take off the plastic, wrap that it comes in, throw away that little gel packet, and I save this, which is the wrapper for the top. I like to do my drip tests on these. I find that the paper is just the right amount of sturdiness to do those drip tests. So I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to save this um, for a couple minutes later. All right, I have four thumbtacks here. I like to raise my canvases up on thumbtacks. Um, when I first started out, I was using cups, which they work too, but I would find that sometimes I would miss when I was putting it back down if I had picked it up and <laughs> it would like fall off the edge. And I don't know, I was just a little bit too wild, I guess, <laughs> for the cups. So I have found that using um, pins works better for me because they don't move or fall off. However, sometimes they are a little bit tricky to get in. So I will take something hard like a pair of scissors or um, using the back of my palette knife here just to push them in because I actually did hurt my thumb at one point pushing them in. And I had to take a break from painting for a while. <laughs> I had a poor painting injury. Don't want that to happen to you. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got them on this side. Here I've got them on the long side. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to hold them up. Um, one of the most important things when doing any type of pour painting, especially a Dutch pour because the paints are so thin, is to make sure that it's level. So one, you can see it's rocking a little bit here. So I am going to pull out my level and just make sure that the bubble is in the middle there. So it looks good that way. Looks pretty good this way. I like to check all my edges just to make sure we don't have any problems. Because if you have been Dutch pouring for any amount of time, 
and have managed to lose a painting because the paint slides right off the edges. You know how heartbreaking that can be. Um, because this is just a tiny bit not skew, I am going to slide this under. It's just a little piece of that lid and then you can see that made it nice and secure so it's not going to move around and that bubble is still in the middle, checking all my edges. Okay, awesome. The next thing that I'm gonna go and do is paint my edges because let me talk you through the colors that I'm gonna use. So I am gonna be using, as my base color, this is a custom mix. I mixed, it started out as Liquitex, Quinacridone, Magenta. I mixed a little bit of phthalo green um, because I wanted it to be more neutral. I also mixed a couple different reds and I put a little bit of unbleached titanium in there just to help out because unbleached titanium is an opaque color and I didn't want the base to be too transparent. So before I get started, because this has a level of transparency to it, I'm gonna take my straight Liquitex quinacridone magenta paint and cover the edges um, just to make sure that as it drips over, there aren't any problems. Then for my pour colors, I have the first two colors that I'm gonna pour are this unbleached titanium, which is opaque, and the Liquitex light green permanent, which is also opaque. I want to make sure that this color is between this green and this um, purpley magenta color because I don't want them to overmix and become muddy. I'm also gonna be using golden turquoise. This color sells up and on my floral type of Dutch pour paintings, um, the edges become really beautiful. And then of course, I'm gonna have my hot dog layer on top. Okay, before I get started with that, let me just check my comments here. Hello from Slovenia, South Africa. Oh, hello, love those colors. Indiana, I got people from all over. <laughs> this is so exciting. Hello everybody. All right, um, don't have any questions yet, so I'm going to get started painting my edges, and I'm going to let you see that whole process here. So I've got a nice, um, somewhat wide brush so I can get that coverage. And while I'm painting the edges, I am going to tell you about some of my exciting upcoming um, shows and an exciting week for YouTube. So I have, if you live anywhere locally to um, Southeast Pennsylvania, anywhere in the tri-state area, New Jersey, Delaware, um, Philadelphia, Lancaster region, I have some shows coming up for you. So on July 29th will be my first show of the season and that will be in Lidditz, Pennsylvania. If you have never been to Lidditz, Pennsylvania, you have to check it out. It is the cutest town, in my opinion, in like the whole world. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Stars Hollow from Gilmore Girls. I'm also a big Gilmore Girls fan. <laughs> um, there are just these cute shops. The park is amazing. They have really great restaurants. Uh, I don't know. There's just like I have some type of like soul connection to Lidditz, Pennsylvania. And it, as I hear, it has become a bit of a destination town. So if you love small towns of America, I highly recommend you check it out. And if you want to come for the art show that is on July 29th, um, whoops, you can't see what I'm doing here. Um, I would absolutely love to see you there. I will have a lot of artwork for sale. I will have magnets and coasters for sale. Everything will be discounted off of what the prices are on my website. So if you are looking for some artwork for your home or your office or to give as a gift, that is always a great way to save a little bit on your artwork. The other two shows that I have coming up are both in September. One is, the first one is September 9th and 10th. That's a two day show. And that one is Brandywine Festival of the Arts, I believe is what it's called. And that is in Wilmington, Delaware. 
I have not exhibited at that show yet, but I did see it last year. It seems like an amazing show. There will be so many artists there and I'm excited to be selling at that show for the first time this year. Please pray for good weather. <laughs> These uh, events are always much more enjoyable when it's not raining on you. And then the third show is also in September and that one is in Kennett Square. I believe this is only the second year for the show, so I do not know how well it will be attended, but it is only about 20 minutes away from where I live, so I figured, hey, why not? And Kennett is also a really, really cute town. It is, there's lots of shops and restaurants, and it is not far from horse country. If you're into beautiful scenery and seeing horse farms and the rolling hills of Pennsylvania. It is also the mushroom capital of the world, so I can't promise that it won't smell kind of funny if you come and visit, but uh, Kennet is a fantastic town as well, so I would love to see you there if you are local or you want to go on the trip. It would be, and you like art shows, these are three great shows that I will be exhibiting at. Okay, so I've got my edges painted, and before I get started talking about the YouTube surprise, I will tip my camera out so you can see me get excited. <laughs> so starting the week of July 9th, which is not this week, but next week, on YouTube, I will be putting out a video every day of a different wave painting. I have been making wave paintings and recording them and I will be editing the videos and I'll be doing a different wave painting every day. Waves are super fun, especially with fluid art because you can get that motion and the energy and the movement. And everybody loves my, everybody loves waves, not just my waves, everybody's waves. So I thought, hey, it's July here in the United States. It's beach season. Let's do wave week. So um, there will be a video every day coming out that week. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you see each of those videos as they come out. Um, I do want to tell you that my first two experiments, well, not experiments necessarily, but my first two paintings did not go as expected. <laughs> I ended up having to change them after I re finished recording because they were just moving everywhere and I was late losing my waveform. However, I love the way that they turned out. Like they look so cool in the end. It just wasn't what I thought I was going to get, but that's okay. That's a part of fluid art. So I will walk you through the process of what I'm doing and then I'll show you how I fixed things that didn't go well. I will show you the ones that turned out perfectly. And then you'll see different color schemes. You'll see different styles, different techniques that I'm trying, and I'm just really excited about this week. So um, let's see, do I have any, oh, from Queensland, Australia, Malta, oh my goodness, Paris, France, I've, Iowa, I have got viewers from all over the world. This is so fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, next up, we are going to do our drip test. I like to use the paper that came off of the canvas to do my drip test just to make sure that my colors are close enough in um, how they're gonna move in the thickness of them, how they're gonna move on the canvas. And so that, whoops, that one came out a little bit too fast. That one's gonna drip further, I know. Um, so what I'm attempting to do here, I'm gonna do another one so I can test it. Um, I'm going to take each of my colors, I'm going to put it on the paper, then I'm going to hold the paper up and I'm going to let it drip down just to make sure that they're going to flow at approximately the same rate. It does not have to be exact exact, but if any of them are flowing like way faster than the others, I will need to adjust before I pour. All right, those are my colors. I know that one's going to run too fast because I pour too much, but I can just ignore that one. I tip it up, watch my colors run. And the this one is running a bit faster than the others, but I'm okay with that because that's the base. All my pore colors are pretty similar. I usually like for my metallics to run a little bit slower than the other colors, but those look pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a go. The next thing I'm gonna do is put my hair up so that I don't accidentally 
drop pieces into the painting or if I decide I want to blow with my mouth, um, I don't accidentally dip my hair into the painting because that has happened before. And then I'm gonna put on my gloves and we'll get started. All right, so this is my base paint here. This is a custom mix, as I said before. It has started with mostly quinacridone magenta, but it also has a bunch of other colors mixed in. I like to do custom colors, especially for bases. So I'm gonna start by just pouring this around. And then I'm gonna take my blow dryer and I'm going to push the colors out towards the edges. Okay, I've got plenty of base paint, which is good. Looks like I lost my little paper that I put under there. Let me get that back, back under there. Okay. I'm gonna run my finger over the edges just to try to get an even coverage. And the paint that I painted on there with the paintbrush is already dry. So I want my pore colors to spill over the edges and drip. So I'm gonna make sure that I have wet surface on all of my edges. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next, I'm gonna take my blowtorch with this, is just like a kitchen, kitchen like torch, it's just pretty small. And I'm gonna just go over it, make sure I get all, any bubbles that have appeared in here out. Okay, and then I'm going to start with my pork colors. I'm going to start with the unbleached titanium, and that's going to be on my base. I'm going to do a non-symmetrical line like this. Go over it a few times just to make sure I have enough of that base opaque color before I put the green on because I don't want the green to mix with that dark purple magenta color too much because I don't want to end up with muddy colors. So I'll put this on next. This is going to be really pretty, um, I think, <laughs> as an accent color against that base of a magenta. And then I'm gonna add this golden turquoise sparingly. It goes far, like really far. And I don't want this to take over or make the paints move too much. So I just added it in little droplets along there. Um, then I'm gonna come in with my copper. This is Liquitex copper. I will make sure to drop these links in the description um, after the video is over. If you would like to purchase them, I am an Amazon associate. I make a small commission from any of the links on Amazon if you purchase. No extra cost to you, which is super nice. And then mustard. <laughs> Every time it makes me laugh. All right. So those are my colors that I poured down before I get started. 
uh, blowing them out. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to take my base color and blow it over a little bit this way and then this way. And then I'm gonna start up here at the edge. This is the way I like to do my Dutch pours. I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna blow up in this direction. And then I'm gonna take portions and just blow them out like this. So they're like petals. I don't like to start at one side and go back and forth the way that some pour artists do. This is just a style that I've developed that I really like. Kind of gives me my own look in this art form. So I don't think you'll be able to hear me if I'm talking while the blow dryer's on. So I just wanted to explain that before I got started. All right, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, as I was pouring that out, uh, as I was blowing out those edges, I noticed that this paint over here didn't move too much, so I just wanted to add a little bit in that corner in case I need it. All right, ready for the magic? Here we go. Right, that's pretty. I like the way that the green um, has kind of mixed over the um, that off-white unbleached titanium. I've got some really nice cells coming up in here. Let me see, maybe I can hold this up so you can see it a little bit better. Can you see it a little bit better? Give it some time to develop. Um, let's see, I don't think I'm going to blow it anymore. I've got some really interesting lines around the petal shapes. These are dripping over the edge, which is totally fine. This one's dripping a lot over the edge there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finger swipe this just to bring the whole composition together. Uh, let me move this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to finger swipe it. This is like, I don't know, this is like, so I just love this part. Um, so I pull, I wear small gloves. I have relatively small hands, but I wear really tight fitting gloves. And then I pull the tip of the finger off the edge there. Can you see that? So um, I have like a, a very narrow point to work with. That's not actually my whole fingertip. That's what I like to swipe with. Here we go. <laughs> I love this part. And then I really love here where I swiped right through the middle of that drop and it made like little buds coming off. I will often go back into solid areas and just drag some loops through and to add some more interest. It kind of looks like the plant life is growing um, with like new branches, new little bud parts coming off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Oops. Oh, that's nice. Those colors so vibrant in there. Let me pull some through here as well.
Oh, that's lovely. I'm gonna pull put it through there. All right, this is interesting. I really am glad that I added that golden turquoise. I think that color, especially like right there, right here, got a lot, a lot of nice little buds that are popping up in those colors. Um, don't think anywhere needs the line through the leaf. I like the way it turned out. I'm not gonna touch it too much. Over here it is dripping off the edge a lot, um, which is kind of pulling that shape out. And I don't know if I like how that's forming. So I think I'm actually going to kind of redraw that edge and then pull this off and add a little bit more of the paint to the edge because I don't feel like that is working for this composition. It just it doesn't have the same shape as the others. So <laughs> I hope I don't ruin this. Let's see. my palette knife and just gently cover over that section there. Pull that right off. Right off the edge there. Uh, much better, in my opinion. Do you agree? <laughs> Do you like that better? Kind of follows the rest of the... Oh, I'm getting white in here. There we go. Kind of follows the rest of the composition a little bit better. I don't mind that one so much going off the edge. It's not like ultra stretched. Okay. Along this edge, there's some pretty interesting green. There's a lot of copper and gold. So that's gonna be very shimmery, very, very shimmery through here. Along this edge, it's gonna have this really pretty copper um, shimmer when it dries. Go ahead and torch it just in case there are any, any extra bubbles in there. And then this base paint is also gonna dry um, significantly darker than it looks here. I am aware of that. I think it's going to be really pretty. I think that contrasting green and turquoise is going to pop. It's going to be sh real shimmery, especially in here where I have a lot of bubbles. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Let me turn it around so you can see it from full direction here. I don't want to pick it up, get it off balance, but there it is. Okay. Let me take off my gloves here so I can pull my screen back up and see if there are any questions that I can answer. Oops. Okay. <laughs> oh, the color, let's see. Um, yes, it's Becky, yes, it's summertime here in Pennsylvania, United States is like the, um, getting on the hottest part of the year it can be get to be mm, usually in the 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, let's see. Thank you, Becky. These colors are gorgeous. 87 degrees in winter. My goodness. Where do you live, Karen? <laughs> um, thank you, Isabel. It's magical. Thank you so much. Um, Son Sonia. Yes, I like the magenta background too. Um, thank you all for joining me today. I hope you found this enjoyable, possibly useful and helpful for learning something new. Um, I love doing this for you all. <laughs> it's really fun for me. And um, I, I hope that you have enjoyed my YouTube channel. Thank you again for joining me today. And I'll do this again another time. So I'll see you there. Bye.